What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of Respect the Game podcast. My name is Edward, named after a great man, that being my pops. Shout out to my mother and my grandmother for helping raise me too. Please make sure you go follow at Emac Stats for all your up to date high school pro and collegiate sports coverage. Will not disappoint. We'll keep you up to date with all that is going on in the sports world. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, to be determined if we're uh, going to go on the three on three tournament uh, this week. Uh, our brother Sedacious uh, is not in the building yet, but nonetheless, you know, as long as one, as long as two of us are in the building, we're gonna always hold it down. But it's three today, so let's have a great show. <clears throat> uh, big brother, uh, the shiniest one. Definitely tapping in, checking in. Uh, surgical pigs, man. Uh, shout out to my dog who probably just dropped a hundred times in the group. His name will be revealed if it does smack, but uh, more to come. We'll get into that. Let's go. Yo, it is the host with the most that blows the most smoke. Black piece, the rap plug, the hip hop plug. You already know. Uh, in your spare time, be sure to go check out uh talking smoke podcast spotify App apple podcast and where you get your dope podcast from that's where you can find that man let's go happy for the july out there to all you beautiful people in the world um i've this past weekend i got caught up in just getting caught up on like the ysl cases and the young thug case i'm like what's going on me personally, I'm trying to like when I first seen the young thug had like the jail just black, I was like, all right, cool, okay. It seems that we have have, have one one point on the board in our favor. So you would think uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Me in Atlanta, everybody black. But but then as I like, like I say, as I went to go about trying to get caught up on like how the cases unfolding and what's going on, I'm like, I don't think you're on my side, but or on young thug's side there, buddy. Uh but do y'all think Young Thug will beat this case? Oh, man. Them sales about to go through the roof when he come home. I think he going to beat it um, just due to the frivolous nature overall on the case. I won't go into specifics if people have been catching up or, excuse me, keeping up with it. Um, you see the inconsistencies and a clear violation of constitutional rights um, within the case and how it's being conducted, um, especially as it pertains to um, the prosecution's witnesses and just uh, witness tampering altogether. So, man, it's really a shit show, man. It, it just looks like a big play uh, being enacted. Oftentimes, man, when I see clips of it, it doesn't even look real in regards to the, the back and forth uh, banter between you know, the judge and, uh, you know, legal parties and things like that. So um, I, I think they'll uh, eventually walk in. You know, when, in hip-hop, if you beat a case of this magnitude, that'll automatically elevate him to a boosy level status, especially in Atlanta. He'll be a, a legend. Yeah. He already a legend Untouchable. forever, but he, he would definitely be, especially from a street sense of, legendary sense in regards to music i mean it just it would benefit him greatly um so i, I definitely think he he'll beat it especially with what his lawyer went through as well um willing to go down for his client which is probably one of the best market employees this guy is going to forever get business and just off of that alone being being willing to go you know what I'm saying um just asking the judge hey can i go do my time with my client, like, come on, like. But even like, though, like, I was watching it, and if if face value, it just looked like, bro, he's like balls to the wall, going all out for his client. But I, I question how strategic and of a chess move it was for him to be able to do that or think to do that, whether it was like premeditated and calculated or not. Because if you do do that, and it's like he can't show up to court. Then you put it, put him in a position to be like, oh shit, you had me locked up. I want a mistrial. Like, like I couldn't help my client because you locked me up. Remember, and the the uh, prosecution side being like, your honor, um, yeah, we're gonna need him to be in the courtroom because that's not really gonna help this help us in the long run because he gonna have and rights to a mistrial. That's why I say they all over the place. So. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, Black Peace, is Young Thug going to beat this case? Um, gentleman is coming home, man. Gentleman is coming home. Um, I see a lot of desperation in the, in the uh, prosecutors. They were very confident two and a half years ago. Hell, I think the world thought it was over. But once things actually got you know on and going, they seem like they're scratching and scraping. You know, Diddy. Um, I feel like they're trying to. They're the, the judge. Even though he seems like he's against Young Thug, I really feel like he's neutral. But I feel like the events that are going on in the case are making him feel some type of way. So if he feels like he's getting played by Young Thug's lawyer, he tends to say, you know what, screw you, Young Thug. If he feels like the prosecutors are starting to abuse the law or starting to, like, try to, you know, go against what he he's allowing, then he gets pissed off at them. I don't think he's necessarily against Young Thug. I just think he doesn't want to get played with and manipulated. He wants a straight case. That's what I'm reading from it. Um, and I think that's what happened with the whole situation with his lawyer and why his lawyer was attacking him. Like, you know, like, why are you doing this behind my back and this and that? And I feel like he was just trying, I think the, the judge was personally trying to get information because everything is just so crazy where they're out in public. He's trying to get information to where things are a little more smooth. The witnesses aren't cooperating. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing as far as like what they said a couple of years ago. And, and they're not remembering anything. So it's, it's frustrating to the judge to where he's just like, you know what, I got, I got to start doing ridiculous stuff. And just like when things started to come full circle and the you know, thugs attorney, you know, attacked him about it, said, hey, man, you can't do that. Hey, what's the, you know, I can't do that. He tried to pull a power move and say, well, give me the guy's name. And just like you said earlier, like that kind of, you know, information and trying to punk somebody and trying to say, I'm going to put you in jail. You can't do that, Lee. So that was one of those situations where Young Thug's lawyer is still on top of it. He knows what he's doing. He, they're in total control, man. Like, every angle that is happening in that courtroom, as much as it seems like, oh, Young Thug's about to be put away forever, there's nothing sticking at all. Nothing. Nothing. Like I said, they tried to do the whole, try to get confidential stuff about him, and they tried to flip it around, and his lawyer found and said, you know what, lock me up, as long as I'm with my client. Trying to play it off as if he didn't know, okay, this is going to get thrown away if I get locked up. So, so yeah, man, uh, like I said, man, they, they're, they're, uh, they're falling apart, man. It's, uh, it would be, I give it, realistically, one year for Young Thug to be home. One year. Kendrick Lamar's Oh, no, 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 not that. Uh, Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us is up uh, to win a Grammy. Um, wow. Hold on. I just want to make... <laughs> I seen that somewhere. I, I saved the wrong thing, but nonetheless, uh, yeah. Did y'all watch the uh, Ken and Friends concert? What were y'all takeaways from that concert? If y'all, well, did y'all see it? Did y'all get a chance to check it out? Yeah, man. It's, I, I just, I, and not to beat a dead horse, because that's essentially what. Real quick, forgive me for cutting you off. I want to chunk it up to maybe life or something happening as to why Sedacious wasn't on the podcast, but me putting uh, Kendrick Lamar on the rundown makes me think he's ducking. Sedacious, where are you? Sedacious, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our dog. Man. Love you, dog. <laughs> I just think, man, it was just a furthering of the onslaught of shitting on somebody, um, showing him quite literally in poetic <laughs> justice fashion, right? Like, this is what the culture looks like. This is what it looks like when you can bring out your whole city, your whole, you know what I'm saying, your whole state where you can have Crips and Bloods on the same stage, where you can have beefing neighborhoods and beefing sets on the same stage and different, you know, like I, I bring the culture together. I embody what it is to be a part of Black culture. And I'm not saying Crips and Bloods are a part of Black culture, but in regards to West Coast and that being their culture in regards to being the origination of gangs, right? Um, just seeing the unity in regards to, again, the people he was able to bring out, um, not only rappers, but again, 
athletes, entrepreneurs, like, again, he, he was representing something bigger than himself. Like I'm, I'm a whole side of the continent, bro. I'm a whole side of the country. Like you don't have that. Like, again, you, 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 you come over here to get your swag. Like, and we, and we own to you. You still great. Go make some music now after this though. After I didn't expose what you really are to everybody, it's going to hit a little different. And I ain't saying Drake ain't talented. And I ain't telling you that I may not go listen to that. I may be jamming it if it's hard. But it's like, it does lose a little bit of luster. It does lose some value. It, it loses a lot of uh, the essence that his music had around it, right? Like, now, if Drake get back in that melodic bag and he don't give me tough Drake, that's how you beat Kendrick. You go, you go get back to your roots. Go give me comeback season Drake. You go do that. You go get in that bag. Come on. And he can't f with you, Drake. Realistically, if you go get in that bag, they, that's your lane, bro. Like, you kind of, like, you know, like, lane you got to just stay true. Bro, come on. That's all I'm asking you to do. Please, but don't go give me back outside, boy, toting the 70 on the strip. I'm ready to, you know. That shit don't even make sense. They don't even make 70 clips. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, anyway, okay. like I say, I, I digress, but Black he's piece. the culture. <laughs> uh, I pretty much agree with Shine Hard for the, for the most part of what Kendrick did. Um, I feel like it was a little bit deeper. I think that was his way of responding to a lot of uh, – what Drake was saying in his diss songs about, you know, his relationship with his wife, his kids, you know. You know, really, Banger said my nigga YG. And then you know, he go YG. out YG on stage actually you know, he, banging his set. <laughs> and it's like, Drake, you might want to just, but go ahead, bro. But yeah, it, it was like everything he's, you know, I'm a bigger, I'm bigger than you in your own city. The the That concert was exclusively for Compton, literally. It was nobody <laughs> else invited. But Compton. So, you know, just everything about that little, that little, um, not little, because it was definitely a big event. Everything about that event, man, it was uh, it was definitely just a diss to to Drake, but not but not in the sense of just, oh, this is all for Drake. It was just like it was it was well overdue. Um also the fact that Drake, I feel like, has never brought anybody together. And just like you said, he showed that power of doing that. And if anything, I feel like Drake is a big side chooser when it comes to outside beefs. And this was like Kendrick saying, hey man, I'm so intact with the culture. I know how this actually works rather than just trying to like pick a side and do what's cool. Like, I know this is something that needs to be done and I'm mad enough to step into it. Like you were right, you, you, you've been around so many beefs to where you just don't know how to move. You just, I don't know. So, I feel like this was him showing, like, bro, this is how people in the culture really move, man. It's all about just feeling it and not trying to do what everybody wants you to do. So, um, breaking news, calling it now. As I've had a history, what album was that? Was that Damn? I don't know what album that was, but y'all remember when I had predicted that Kendrick was going to drop the album, and he did like that same exact week. So, um, yeah, that was actually crazy. Um, and that's why you beautiful people should be listening to us because we're going to let you know what happens before it happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> respect our game. Um, all the momentum that Kendrick has had. Here's the other thing, too. I'm going to say this. Watching the uh watching the concert and watching how long it took Kendrick Lamar to respond to Drake initially made me start to question if this was always in the plans as soon I'm talking about was this like foresight that Kendrick had back when he uh hopped on a future song and to like if he that, dated him the whole way, which is the if, ultimate. Bro, if that was the case, it will go down as the best 
<laughs> hip hop chess move in history because quite literally he was ready for war. Lit like in he was armed to the T like it's unfathomable with, with handguns, techs, oh. assault <laughs> rifles, the, the whole works, grenades, rocket launchers. He came ready to yeah. Let's do Drake it. Drake earned it. Drake earned it. Straight up. He did. <laughs> But say Drake, boy, you worked hard for me to get on your ass like this. Pause, bro. Like that, that's how I feel. Like listening to like that and watching the the concert, I'm just like, yo, was this like? He ran the disc back five times as well in a row. Literally, like no exaggeration. Uh, word for word, the entire crowd. And so, man, yeah, and them I, not getting tired of it once. <laughs> <laughs> if I could sit down with Kendrick Lamar. And if I don't get that opportunity, Kendrick, everybody share this and get this to Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick, answer this question for the culture, for the Respect the Game podcast. Did you have this concert and vision and already in the works as you were taking your precious time to respond to Drake after you dropped the disc of like that? If in the event you had remotely had envisioned all of this and knew you were setting him up for the one two hook right uppercut. Just surgical <laughs> to the absolute utmost. Um but yeah no nah, the concert was absolutely amazing. Even apart from like just Kendrick's part, like all the other uh acts, DJ Mustard, DJ Head, I think uh it was absolutely great and like I could only imagine the energy in the form arena because, like, I felt the energy just watching the stream. I was just like, this shit is, like, through the roof. The ceiling is the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Michael Jordan. <laughs> but, yeah, man, like, that's all I could think about. I was just like, damn, like, was he setting all of this up the entire time to have his moment when he was, like, in the heat, in the battle of war of going against Drake, like, Oh, this whole time, oh, why he ain't responding? What's taking him so long to respond? Like, was this nigga at rehearsals Which was in the only middle? A few days, like this. <laughs> right, true indeed. But it's just like, was he at rehearsal the whole time? Like, why y'all waiting on him to respond? Like, I mean, just think about it. He had three diss tracks already lined up when he was like, when he finally did decide to respond. So what it's not far fetched for him to like had already been building up for this concert to be like. Not like us, I know it's gonna be a smash, and we just to go to the bone. Uh, saying all that to say, it's already been seen that Kendrick Lamar is uh shooting the uh, not like us video shoot, he's going to drop the video shoot along with a new album that nobody is expecting. You heard it here first, our sources are trust me, bro. Uh, 